Right, so this morning we're working on the power flow header for the combined harvester. Uh, it's a 25 foot uh, header that goes on our combine. Um, and this, is, this one's got the power flow belts, which it works. I mean, they do work really well, these headers. They work well in rape and uh, in lower crops as well, because it flicks out that, that belt sort of the way it works, flicks stones or anything mud out forwards. Um, the only problem with it is bloody heavy uh, as, a, as a header. It's a really heavy header. Um, but um, the actual system is great, uh, power flow belts. We don't really have much trouble uh, with them. So what we're doing with it, though, is under here is the sort of sensing fingers for the um, uh, auto level table and height control. And they are getting, I have sort of tried welding them up and making them, but they're worn out. They're getting worn. And where they've gone, sometimes they've bent this piece here. So we've got new ones. They certainly know how to charge for these. I can't remember how much they were, but they certainly weren't worth it. Um, so we've got those and we've got new uh, brackets that they fit in here um, because it's all just waving around and it'll just tighten everything up. I'll put all new bolts in but obviously I can get them wherever and take all this off and straighten it and then take this protecting bottom plate off and check the uh, potentiometer that's under there that it's all set up right and... Um, mice haven't eaten it or anything like that so first job take these off and take this plate off okay so we've got this plate off uh, obviously it's covered in dust and straw um, as was underneath which I've blown out using a airline attached to the uh, trailer air brakes of that tractor, which is always a handy thing to do. Anyway, we come under here, because I took, and uh, we, can, we can get the light different on it. There we are. Right, I think we can see why it perhaps wasn't working brilliantly. Uh, so the thing's wobbling around all over the place. So I think that might have been an issue one would suspect. So you always find something once you start looking. Uh, a bit of movement in that, but hopefully that'll be okay. So we'll do this up and set that correctly. Take these ends off, because these are all bent. And then once straightening, they're gonna be difficult to straighten there. Actually, I think it'd be easier just to take off Oh, maybe not. Oh, actually, the whole thing comes off. Yeah, I'll take that whole thing off. That'd be favourite. OK, so let's um, get that off and uh, sort it out. All right, so I've taken off this uh, thing here. That comes off quite easily, so I can bend these straight. And I took off the potentiometer because uh, I thought it had come loose, but it hasn't. It's um, broken the plastic. Um, that's a little bit annoying. It does... It feels, when you turn this, it doesn't feel quite right anyway. Now, I may have one of these, so I've got to go and check. Unfortunately, this has got no numbers on it at all, so I'll have to look at the part book and see if it's the same as one I've actually got because um, I know where that was for so hopefully it is and uh, we can use it otherwise I expect they'll charge me probably 200 quid for that uh, we'll see okay so we've the potentiometer I've got, I have got a spare one, but unfortunately that too is broken, like this one. So that's a little bit annoying. 
Now we've done a bit of, I've done a bit of research on it. Um, I cannot find that as a non-massy part. So um, I'm sure if you could find what it is, that's just a standard thing somewhere. But there's no numbers on it at all. Um, so I'm afraid I'm stuck getting that. Well, not quite. The reason being, International used a Massey header on some of their uh, axle flow combines a few years ago. Well, and the, and the part numbers transfer straight over. So this, as a uh, Massey part, is 237 pounds. But as a case part, is 185 pounds. So I've ended up ordering it off a case. Unfortunately, Cramp don't do it or anyone like that. So that's coming as a case part. Now, I've just been looking at something else as well. I need a new part here. I don't know if we can see this. This little bit here that bolts onto the wobble box arm. Uh, on this spare knife, one of these snapped off last year, that bit there. So the knife is okay, it's just this bit that's broken. Now you just won't believe how much that bit is. So it's a little bit of casting with a little bit of machining. So that bit there, oh, sorry, if you order it as a massy part, it was £184. If you order it as a case part, it was 280 pounds, 280 pounds for this little bit. However, this wobble box is made by class. So I figured that this and this could very well be class as well. Now, the description that I've had from the class dealer, that sounds the same and is, if it is the same, is £110, which obviously is a hell of a lot less. So I'm going to go to a neighbour's farm and I can measure this and see if it is the same. And if it is, happy days. Although, quite frankly, it's not really worth 30 quid, let alone 110 But at least that's not stupid money uh, like the others wanted. So, a little bit of hunting around this morning has, in theory, saved me a couple of hundred pounds. Um, anyway, I shall carry on putting the rest of this back together now and bending bits straight. All right, it's the next day, or a couple of days later. Um, now I've lost it. Here it is. So, I did go to a cast case... Uh, class dealer and got a cup of tea I might add and sure enough that is exactly the same part manufactured by class who probably are the original manufacturer of it for Massey and uh, Case IH so that's £110 like I said hardly worth that but that's a lot less than Case, who were nearly £300 for it, which is just ridiculous. So we're now back to having two knives. So that's good. That will go on soon. OK, I'm, the potentiometer hasn't yet been... is ordered, but that hasn't turned up yet. Um, <sighs> these parts here I've now bent straight and fitted back on. And then up here at this end, we actually have, I mean, it's not the best looking sensors in the world, but um, that is how they are. Um, and they all look good to go. And they're all not flopping around everywhere like the old ones, or indeed broken right through. So... Uh, that's good. So that should all work, get that potentiometer turned up and this table should be back to uh, back to fully working. Last year 
I did actually put all new bearings in these rollers at the front here um, because they were getting a bit seized or I took all the all the belts off and uh, checked all the bearings on there um, and that's all that's all good to go should be all good um, so ready to go combining <laughs> well in a couple of months maybe um, so that's about that then <laughs>